Hello, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and today I will be doing a pastel demonstration or tutorial for you, whatever you want to call it. For this piece, I will be working on yellow pastel matte paper that is bound in a sketchbook. Pastel matte paper is a super thick, durable paper that, is, that has a lovely velvety texture. It's like a hybrid between sanded paper and traditional drawing paper, and I really, really like to draw on it. I haven't showed it much on um, this channel, but I really do enjoy working with it. I started by sketching out the basic shapes with a pastel pencil. For the mid to foreground, I used a green pencil, and then for the mountains and sky, everything in the background, I used a blue pastel pencil. This just helped me keep track of what lines were what, and since those colors would be used in those areas, it was going to be easy to blend in my markings. I also started blocking in the basic shapes of the clouds and the sky, and once everything was marked in, I used a dark navy blue to start marking in the shadows. Having the shadows and dark areas marked out helps me keep track of where everything's located and it helps anchor the picture for me visually. So I know, okay, this is where the water's gonna be, this is where the shadows, I know how to start shaping my picture. Once the shadows were all blocked in, I then started working on the sky. I'm using a medium light blue new pastel for this. Those are the rectangular pastels you see and they are made by Prismacolor. I'm using this shade of blue because it's a good mid-range. I can blend darker pastels on top and I can blend lighter ones on the bottom and I can. it's easy to adjust. I then came in with a purple pastel to start adding the shadows of where the clouds will be. Um, I'm, it's not gonna look purple in the sky a ton, it's just to help darken those areas. Then I take a light blue pastel and I start blocking in the bottom of the sky the area closest to the mountains because that appears lighter and so I want it to be lighter and then I start adding the tops of the clouds. I'm just building this up gradually and it's not perfectly like defined yet. I'm not focusing on details. I'm just looking for mass shapes and color and value at this point in the picture. Now you can see that I had come in and I've added some dark blue to the very top of the sky or the top of the paper. Again, this is to help add depth, and then I came in with a turquoise color just to add some fun color and interest to the sky. I'm not trying to make this picture incredibly realistic, and so I wanted to have some fun with the colors I was using. Once I've blocked in the main colors of the sky, I started working on the mountains. I'm taking my dark navy pencil and I'm adding that to give shape and depth to the mountains. And I'm adding, I'm focusing more of it on the mountains that appear closer and less on the mountains that are in the, more in the distance. I'm using a light blue for those more distant mountains. That's because the further away something is from you, the more blue it will appear. And it will also be lighter in color and more hazy. And that's called atmospheric perspective. And so I'm trying to make sure I keep that in mind when I'm layering my colors so that I get that depth. I then came in with a paper blending stump and softly blended it out and then I came in with a navy blue pastel to start adding some more markings to the mountains. I'm not being overly particular and I will be doing more work on these mountains later. I blended that out to soften the edges, just gradually building up the layers. There's going to be a lot of back and forth wherever I'm working. I then moved on to the hills in the front that are in front of the mountains and started by adding greens. First I used a really dark blue green that was a little bit more green based than the navy blues I used in the mountains behind it. I then came in with some lighter greens and layered them up. I'm just kind of going back and forth on the colors and just laying that pigment down and trying to get in my mind what they will all look like together. I then noticed the distant mountains were coming forward a little bit and so I added some light blue to those distant mountains to help push them back, to gray them up and to lighten them so they would recede visually. And then I jumped back to the hills and I used a paper blending stump to blend those out softly. I'm still trying to keep some of the yellow poking through um, because I wanted this picture to be a, bit, a little bit more looser. I didn't want it to be as refined as some of my other pieces. Now I'm coming in and starting to do work on the field that is in the distance 
And I'm using some lighter greens for this, but I'm also using a variety of a variety of them. So I'm using some blue base greens, some very red, olivey greens, and I'm just layering up the colors and the values to help add distance to this area. Once those greens were laid in, I added some browns to the mountains to start to give the impression of uh, rocks. I then moved down to the hedge of bushes that's in the mid-ground. I did this so that I could better gauge where to put the indications of distant trees and buildings that would appear behind them. And I did those markings with blue. But by starting to add the structure of that bush gave me a better idea of where to place them and how many to place. I then add some more layers of yellow and green to the distant field to help shape them. I focused on using more yellows that were blue based, so more lemony yellows that were pale in color and to help them seem more distant. And then I moved down to the bush um, that we had already started working on. I used a lot of ultramarine blues and navy blues to start adding the shadows to that area. Then I moved to the left side and started adding the shadows and shaping the bushes that grow along what will eventually be the river. I'm starting with the most distant bush first and then I will work my way forward. Um, that way I can help build upon those layers and help make it more distant. I find sometimes it's easier to work from the top of the paper down, even though I still tend to jump around quite a bit. In general, I move top to bottom to help give shape. But alas, we saw that I got distracted after the first bush that grows along the riverbed and started blocking in the grass. Um, I think I did this so that I could put the bushes on top of the grass without having to draw grass around them too carefully. But, you know, it, in these early stages, it's really flexible on how you go about working in your picture. And a lot of what to do and in what order really depends on the individual painting you're creating and your comfort level with the medium you're working in. Um, I've worked in pastels for several years and I don't even think about what order and when I'm going to do things as much anymore. It's just I go with the flow of what feels right for that particular piece. And so once I blocked in the grass and I blocked in the bushes, I started blocking in the river bank and what will eventually become the river. With the river, I started by adding the browns that would be the dirt uh, on the bank of the river. And then I added the dark colors that would be the shadow that the bank and the grass and everything are casting onto the water. Once those shadows were in blocking those areas, then I moved in with the blues to start blocking in the reflection of the sky on the water. I'm keeping my pastel strokes at this point very horizontal, so left to right. That will help give the impression of a very smooth, placid water, which is what it was like in my reference photo. Then wherever I was doing shadows, I would pull it directly down um, to help make it look like a cast shadow. But other than that direction of pulling the darks down to give the impression of something casting a shadow onto the water, I kept everything horizontal. That way it didn't look too choppy and it didn't compete with the grass next to it, which would be more vertical in stroke. I then started adding greens and browns to the water to make it look like the grass is reflecting and once I started blocking in those basic shapes I moved back to the grass and the bushes to start redefining those areas. Now going back to the importance of what direction you apply your pigment in, um, when we talked about the water we talked about how important it was to keep your application of the the pastel horizontal that also applies to distant fields because the more distant something is the f the flatter it's going to look and so I'm not going to have as much detail and I don't want the height of it competing with the foreground and so I kept my um, pigment markings or pastel markings very horizontal but you can see the grass in the foreground is very vertical and the closer it gets to that bottom right hand corner, the bigger it gets in size. 
once all the main colors were blocked in and the main shapes were blocked in, I started really looking at my reference photo and seeing what needed to be tweaked. I saw that the greens were kind of looking artificial and they needed some more interest so I added a little bit more red. Also there was red along the riverbank and I wanted to tie that in by adding it to other places in the picture. I then looked at my reference photo and saw that the highlights and the shadows weren't quite right along the riverbank and so I added more whites to the river for highlights and shadows along there. I looked at the bushes and saw that there needed to be more shadows and I needed to shape the grass growing along the river a little bit more. I then noticed the mountains weren't receding as much as I would like them to so I added a little bit blue to the hills in the distance and then some grays to the mountains in the distance. And then I started coming and working on more of the bushes and starting to build up the detail and shapes. Um, for me this is how I work. I add the big basic shapes first and then I gradually add more detail, add more um, visual interest with color and value and just building it up slowly and I tend to bounce around the whole painting and um, that way I can build up the whole thing in a way that I want. Um, I don't always have a clear picture of what I want everything to look like when I start and so I start working and then I kind of decide where I want all of the focus or most of the focus to be as the picture grows organically. So that's just how I work. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I just tend to work like that. Um, one thing I did try to do with this picture was when I would blend things, I tended to use the blending step more than a lot of the other tools I use to blend that you see me use on this channel. Um, I find that the blending stump um, or the paper blenders worked better with the pastel map than like the rubber shapers or some of the other tools I use to blend. So that's why you see me using it a lot. And I also tried not to over blend. Um, I wanted to keep a more organic pastel look to it and instead of trying to make it look super realistic. And so I would, I only blended where I thought it was necessary. So in my reference photo, you can see a bunch of cows in the distance. Some of them are quite close behind the bush and some of them are quite far away, but I didn't have much room to draw a cow in detail. And so I just did little tiny dashes and markings to give the impression of there being some kind of animal or bush or tree in the distance to help make it more visually interesting, but not get bogged down by all of the little details. I then started to do more work on the grass and I noticed that I needed to heighten the contrast between the grass that was right along the riverbank and those in the field. And so you can see that the grass along the riverbank has a lot more shadows and it's a darker green than the grass that's a little bit more to the right of the pitcher. Um, that just helped break apart this big massive green and make it more visually interesting. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that our eye kind of likes to clump things together. So if you're looking at a tree in a distance, you'll see you don't see tons of individual leaves unless you are super close to it. You see a mass of trees. And so it's the same with the grass. You will kind of draw a big massive shape of grass and until it gets really close to you and then you'll start seeing the individual blades of grass. Now I'm coming in and kind of fine tuning the water a little bit more. I noticed the water along the bank at by where those three bushes are was kind of looking flat and so I added a few little highlights. It's amazing what some highlights can do to give dimension and shape and then I fine-tuned the shape along the highlights and the shadows in the water. As I was looking at the picture I noticed that the the clouds were looking a little flat and the sky was losing some of its interest and so I just pulled in a little bit more purple to add some shadows to it and give a little bit more dimension to the clouds in the sky. And I'm reinforcing the darker blue at the top so that it stands out a little bit more. And I'm pulling in some blues and yellows on the bottom of the picture right along the bank 
I wanted to add some twigs and leaves and some grass going into the water to help make this look more dimensional and more realistic because there's not going to be a nice smooth line of where the grass ends and the water starts. There's going to be branches and leaves and twigs that have fallen down. There's going to be some of the bank where it's eroded down into the water. And so I'm just kind of looking for those little details that help make this picture come alive. And then I was looking at the picture and I decided I wanted those mountains to recede a little bit more and have them look a little hazier. So I took um, a blue pastel and I just did really soft strokes with it over the top of it. I didn't do any harsh lines because I wanted it to be soft and kind of blend into the picture. And then I thought I was done with the painting until I came back from picking my kids up from school and I looked at it again. And I decided I wanted a stronger, punchier green to be added to the mix and then that led me down the rabbit hole of tweaking the picture even more. It's a dangerous thing to get started fixing a picture later on but I was happier with the tweaks I made and the finished result. So I decided I wanted to have some more colors introduced into the grass. I thought the grass was looking a little flat so I added the stronger greens but then I started adding other colors. I added more blues to the grass and more oranges and yellows and reds just to help make it more visually appealing. I thought it had it looked too like a big blob of green and it was all kind of mushing together. And then I decided to tweak the bushes a little bit more and just, you know, reevaluating how it looks. When usually when I work on a picture, I work on it and then when I think I'm almost done, I take a step back for a couple hours or a little bit and then I come back with fresh eyes and see what needs to be tweaked. This was one of those situations where I thought I could get away without doing that but obviously I didn't because when I came back to clean everything up I realized I wanted to do more. Like the Little Mermaid, I want more type thing. Um, but I, I'm really glad that I did tweak it because I am happier with the final result than I was with it before I tweaked it. So let that be a lesson to you. Take a break, come back with fresh eyes and see what needs to be adjusted on your picture. So one thing I like to do at the end of a painting is add unusual colors to areas to kind of help draw the eye of the viewer to the areas I want it to go to. Um, so you can see I added a little bit of purple to the tops of the mountains. That's a spot where you wouldn't necessarily see it. Adding a little bit of red to the bank of the river and the orange in the grass. All those types of things I did towards the end of the painting were to help add visual interest and to help lead the viewer's eye kind of on a journey or on a path through the picture so that they look at the whole picture instead of just focusing on one specific spot. And when you're creating your own art, experiment with color. See what you can do um, with color to make your pictures interesting and to create different effects and to move your viewer's eye throughout your painting. And at this point in the painting, I'm just doing the fine, final tweaks and adjusting it where I wanted it to be. But I hope this tutorial slash demonstration, I don't know fully what it is, um, really helped inspire you as you get ready to work on your own pastel pieces. And if you did like it, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I create, please hit the subscribe button. Have a great day. Bye.